What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to take a look at the 2021 AP Calculus AB free response question number five. So let's get started. For part A, we just have to show that the derivative dy dx is y cosine x over 4y minus sine x. So it's pretty nice of them that they told us what we should be aiming for. So we're just going to take the derivative of the original equation here with respect to x. So we have 2y squared minus 6 and then equals y sine x. So going forward with this, on the left side, things are a little bit easier. We're going to do the power rule here. So we're going to have 2 times 2y giving us 4y. But remember, anytime you take the derivative with respect to x of a y term, you have to tack on a dy dx. The derivative of minus 6 is 0, so we're just going to leave that be. And then on the right side, we have to use the product rule. So we're going to have the derivative of y is 1 times dy dx times sine x. Plus, we have to make sure we use the product rule. We have y times the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So then from here, we have to get all the dy dx terms on one side. So we have 4y dy dx, and we could subtract the dy dx sine x on both sides. We have minus dy dx sine x, and this is equal to y cosine x. So from here, all we have to do is we're going to group the dy dx terms together. So we could factor out dy dx, and we're left with 4y minus sine x, and this is equal to y cosine x. So the last thing to do here is just divide both sides by 4y minus sine x. And our final answer, we'll just write off to the side here. So these factors cancel out. We're going to have dy dx is equal to, and we have 4 cosine x all over. Let's just fix that a bit. 4 cosine x over 4y minus sine x. For part b, we want to write the equation of a tangent line to the curve at this point, 0 comma square root 3. So what we need to do here is we're going to plug in the point to our derivative because the derivative is going to tell us the slope of our tangent line. So we're plugging in this point here. And just make sure we're plugging in square root 3 for y. So we have square root 3 times cosine of 0 over 4 times the y is square root 3, and we have minus sine of 0. Well, cosine of 0 is 1, so this is just going to give us square root 3 over, and we're going to have 4 square root 3 minus 0, because sine of 0 is 0. So now this simplifies. This is just going to reduce to 1 fourth. So this represents the slope of our tangent line. So there's a few ways we could write this out. We could call this our x1, y1, and then we have y minus y1 equals the slope, 1 fourth, times x minus x1. So you could leave your answer like this. An alternative way to write this, though, if you want to write it in y equals mx plus b form, just notice here, this is not only a point, it's the y-intercept of our line. So we could also just say y equals 1 fourth x plus square root 3. But remember, you don't actually have to solve your equation for y. You could leave your answer like this and get full credit. For part C, we're trying to find the coordinates of the point where the line tangent to the curve is horizontal. Now this phrase here, the fact that we have a horizontal tangent means the slope of the tangent line is going to be zero. And since our derivative is in the form of a fraction, we're going to set the numerator equal to zero. If we set the denominator equal to zero, that's going to tell us where the slope is vertical. So what we have here is we're going to say horizontal tangent. So a horizontal tangent so we'll just explain our reasoning here. So a horizontal tangent implies that dy dx is equal to 0. And this implies then that the numerator y cosine of x is equal to 0. But now we have to be mindful. Notice they said since we have 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to pi, and we have y is positive, then this tells us that y cosine x is equal to 0 when cosine of x is equal to 0. And then what's our solution here? This tells us that x is equal to pi over 2. Because notice x has to be between 0 and pi. So technically, there are infinite answers to this. But this is the one that we're going with. So then from here, we have to think, all right, we want to find the coordinates of the point. So what we could do is we go back to the original equation. The original equation was 2y squared minus 6 equals y cosine x. We're just going to borrow that. We have 2y squared minus 6 equals y sine x. 
So since we have to find the coordinates of the point, we need not only the x, but we also need the y value. So we're going to borrow this here, and we have 2y squared minus 6 equals y times sine of pi over 2. And sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. So that's going to take this to 2y squared minus 6 is equal to y. And then if we rearrange this, we have 2y squared minus y minus 6 is equal to 0. Now, depending on how good you are at factoring here, this we, we're going to use the AC method. You could probably get away with using guess and check here, but I just look at the AC term. I have 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. So that's my AC term here. So this is our AC term. Our B term is negative 1. That's the coefficient in front of the Y. So then I need two numbers that have a product of negative 12 and a sum of negative 1. And the two numbers are going to be negative 4 and 3. So then I rewrite the middle as 2y squared. And then instead of minus 1y, I have, more, I have minus 4y plus 3y minus 6 is equal to 0. So we factor this a little bit more. We're going to factor the first two terms and the last two terms. we got 2y times y minus 2, and then the greatest common factor here is 3. We're left with uh, we're left with y minus 2, and notice we have matching factors. So then get y minus 2 times 2y plus 3 is equal to 0, which tells us that we have two roots. We have y equals 2, and we have y equals the root of this factor would be negative 3 over 2. But this one we reject because before we said y is going to be greater than 0. So then we just write out our final answer here. We had an x value of pi over 2. The y value that we're going to go with is y equals 2. So we could say the point is pi over 2, comma 2. So here's our solution to, this is our solution to part C. So for the last part here, we want to determine if f has a relative minimum, maximum, or neither. And we're not going to use the first derivative test here because the Derivative dy dx is in terms of y and x. So it's going to be easier to use the second derivative test. So we start by finding the second derivative. And we're going to have to use the quotient rule. And we're going to have the low function here. We have 4y minus sine x times the derivative of the function in the numerator. And we have the derivative of y is dy dx times cosine x. And then we have plus y times the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. So that's the first part here for our quotient rule. But then we have minus, and what we have here, we have low d high minus high d low. So we're going to take the derivative of the low function. So the derivative of 4y is 4 dy dx. And then minus the derivative of sine is cosine x. And this is all over the denominator squared. So this is a really messy second derivative. So now for this next part here, we're going to evaluate this at the point we found in part C. So d squared y over dx squared at the point pi over 2 comma 2. That was the point we found in part C. Now, one thing to be mindful of, in part C, what we determined was the point where the slope of the tangent line is horizontal. So what that means is that the slope at pi over 2 comma 2 is equal to zero. So sometimes uh, students will lose sight of the fact that they already did the heavy lifting for part of this question. So just know anytime I plug in the point pi over two comma two to dy dx, it's just equal to zero. So it simplifies really nice. So now we just go piece by piece. We have four times four times two minus sine of pi over two. And then in the second parenthesis here, we have dy dx. So automatically I have zero. So I'm not even going to bother plugging in here, but cosine of pi over 2 is also 0. And then what we have is we have plus, plus y is equal to 2. So we have 2 times negative sine of pi over 2 is going to give us negative 1. And now we have minus y is equal to 2. We got cosine of pi over 2. And cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So whatever this stuff equals here, doesn't matter that this is 4 times 0 minus 0. This whole last piece here is just going to wipe out. And this is all over, we have 4 times 2 is 8, minus sine of pi over 2 is 1, squared like this. So now we could clean this up a bit, and we'll give ourselves more space. So what we're going to have here is the second derivative evaluated at pi over 2, 
comma two is equal to, we have eight minus one, which is gonna give us seven times zero plus negative two. So we have times negative two, and this is over seven squared. So this becomes seven times negative two, which is negative 14, or I could just write it like this. I could say seven times negative two over seven times seven. So the seven over seven cancels. This whole thing simplifies to negative two over seven, which is less than zero. So now I think about this very, very carefully. I always forget the results of the second derivative test, but what I do think about at this step is I think, okay, if my second derivative is negative at a point, when your second derivative is negative, that means your curve is concave down. And if I have a critical point and my curve is concave down at the critical point, it makes a relative maximum. So we could say here, since the second derivative is negative at this point, and the first derivative is zero here, by the second derivative test, pi over two comma two is a relative maximum. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on the 2021 AP Calculus AB free response question number five. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.